Hello everybody, welcome. And this is about the R. Simons HQ building. I bought this building back in March 2019 and we've been doing a complete renovation on this place. I had a vision and that vision is really coming together now because after many months and years of planning, we are at last getting our final part of the project, which is our solar installation. So we can charge all these electric cars off the power of the light. So let me switch to that camera there and let me just take you up and see what's going on. So the time of this coincides with most of the countries under snow. Uh, we're in December 2022. It's pretty cold, although it's fairly bright today, uh, but we are approaching the shortest day of the year. So we're obviously not gonna get the best solar production quite until we go into the summer, but it's been a labor of love, this project, and something I've wanted to do ever since I bought this building. So before we go into the solar project itself, explain what we're doing there, how it works. We've got some Tesla power walls going in as well, as we speak over there. Um, and I will show you all that kind of stuff in this video. But let me just take you back first to so when I bought this building in March 2019. It was a bit of a project and we had to do a very quick renovation. I had to move out of two other premises I had more in town in Bournemouth. But God, it takes ages to find a premises that's suitable. I knew what I wanted in mind and eventually I picked up this place, but it did need a lot of work. So let me show you here some of the pictures of when I bought the building. It was fairly neglected. It was fairly run down. It didn't look very special at all. Uh, but as soon as we bought it, we had 28 days to really do a full renovation. So we worked day and night. I literally used to sleep here and do building and construction work uh, all day long, as well as trying to run the business as well. Luckily, between us and the team, we got all that done and we got the basics done. So we had to knock down walls inside, make a toilet that was suitable for disabled use. We had to uh, knock out walls so you can make a nice customer lounge. We had new electrics, a uh, new boiler for the heating uh, radiator system, new air conditioning systems, new carpets, obviously painting. And then other projects have continued on this building over the following couple of years, which included actually this was all dirt out the front here. So we had that done, we had the windows done, we had gates, we had security systems installed, we had fencing, we got fire alarm systems. So this building has been a real labor of love for me. And I see this building as my pension basically. And uh, I think it's come together really well. It's been a very good functional building, but all the way through this, the project has been to get solar installed. I've always wanted to do this. And never so has it been more important in the last few months when of course electricity prices have changed massively. I mean, we went from paying 16 pence per kilowatt hour here earlier in 2022 to now paying 90 pence per kilowatt hour. Now, luckily, the, recently the government brought in some subsidy to help out with that, but it's still horrendously expensive. And so the running costs have been huge. Luckily, we already ordered and worked with a company called Naked Solar, who I met at a fully charged live event uh, a couple of years ago. And ever since then, it was three years ago, ever since then, I've been working with them on this project to get a really good solar installation along with local battery storage so that we can charge all these cars and run the offices purely off the sun. Hopefully, even charging big battery cars like this, we can run grid independent most of the time. But if nothing else, vastly, vastly reduce our electricity costs here as well. And that difference should be massive savings now. But of course, it's just the right thing to do. And I still don't get why all the other warehouses around here don't have solar panels all over the roof. And I still don't get why the new buildings being built now don't have to have solar by default. I think houses do, but they just put like one or two token panels on. I just don't understand it. Anyway, when I bought this building, I literally took into consideration, apart from office space and warehouse space and useful retail planning permissions, all the various aspects of what the right building would be, and even permissions and use and what kind of road it's on and near a station, that kind of thing. I won't go into too much detail, but it took a long time to find the right place. But one of the things that I did note when I got this building is that this front aspect is south facing. So I thought there's a flat roof up there. We must be able to have solar panels. And indeed, that's what we're doing now. So there's some solar panels going up here. And then we've got the warehouse pitch, which faces east and west. So let me take you upstairs and we'll show you exactly what's being installed. And that accumulates to 60 very large solar panels and then some Tesla batteries inside. So here we're on the roof above the offices. And this is the south facing here. And here we've got 12 panels going on this flat roof. Each one of these panels is 450 watt panel. Uh, so this is 12 on here, and then we've got some more on the warehouse over there. But this section is asbestos roofing from when the building was originally made. Of course, you can't touch asbestos, can't do anything to do that. I'm not gonna have this all specially removed and replaced with different roofing. 
Uh, what we've got here, these 12 panels, another 48 over there, should be sufficient to give us some pretty decent power. I think we've got about 27 kilowatts producible in optimal conditions at any one time. Of course, what we'll do is probably a follow-up to this video where we'll see exactly how in the real world it's working, working for us charging cars, take a while for us to get to grips with the system and how to make it work the most. Because what we don't want to do is export it, we want to absorb everything we can and put it into these big battery cars we've got downstairs. Boy, you feel the cold in the roof up here, so I'll keep this quick. It's so cold, so take my breath away. There's even that you see there's ice in the gutters here, so in fact, I'll clear the gutters out in a minute. So here we are at the back of the warehouse. So this rear section here is an extension to the uh, original warehouse building. So this was done before I bought it, but because this is newer roof and not the, like the original asbestos for that section, we can attach solar panels here. So we've maxed out what we can here. So on the roof you see here, uh, just they can fix in with some rails and the solar panels clamped to them. So it's nice and neat and flush. We've managed to get 48 of these large panels in here. And what this is good for here as well is that this is east facing, that's south facing, and the other side of this pitch is west facing. And that should give us a nice production throughout the course of the day from the morning when the sun's over here and it pans around behind me and then goes down over here. If you just have south facing, for example, you get not much, not much, and the peak in the day, there's only so much you can use, and then it tails away again, but we've got east, south, west, so we should get really good production throughout the day. Now, we've got all these electric cars. We can take everything we can produce from these and probably not export to the grid, but we've also got some Tesla Powell, so any spare, we can charge up the Tesla Powell and keep some energy saved here. And then on days like today, where it's dark by about 3, 34 o'clock in the afternoon, those power walls should be able to then feed back and we can use that energy we made in the day to power our office in the darker hours and then run systems overnight like the various security and alarm systems that we have. And, uh, you know, of course, uh, anything else that's running overnight, lights and such like. So let me take you downstairs and we'll show you some of the electrical side of the gubbins because it's freezing up here and I'm going to get the kettle on. <laughs> Right, this is a bit warmer in here. So all the solar panels are in upstairs, that's all done now. This is the working end. This is Bo from Naked Solar. He's been working in this room for three days now. Mm -hmm. So some energy comes in from a cable, don't know anything else, you tell me what happens next. So from the solar panels up on the roof there, they come down in this conduit here, the DC cables. Yep. Um, they're into this trunking and they feed this, which is the inverter. Um, and this uh, does the conversion from DC into AC power, yep. which is what you use in the property. Yep. Um, which then in turn feeds the loads within the, the property. Yeah, and this um, is a three-phase property. Yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also if there's excess energy left over, so yeah. any loads, any solar that's left over, will feed the batteries um, and they will top themselves up via the panels. So these are two Tesla Powerwall 2 battery packs. Each one's 30 and a half kilowatt hours usable. So we've got 27 kilowatt hours of battery and what we obviously don't want to do really is export the energy to the grid. We want to use everything we can. Now, luckily, we've got a load of big battery cars we can try and keep charged up. That's the idea. And of course, run the offices. Mm -hmm. And then on shorter days, I mean, bear in mind, this is now short days in the winter. Um, it gets dark at half three, four o'clock. So from that time this afternoon, this will be mm -hmm. power in the office yep. and the heaters in the office yep. and all that kind of stuff now. So um, yeah, so that's what that's for. And then actually backup power as well. Mm -hmm. So if we get some kind of power cut here yep. in the office, all the systems are still running, the fire systems and security systems and all that kind of stuff, as well as a general kind of security pallet to draw overnight. As long as you've got enough juice in the battery to, yeah. to power that in a battery. So the solar is, quite, I mean, it's already generating now, and that's already topping up these batteries now, because even with two heaters on upstairs, downstairs, and the office building here, we're still not using all the energy. In fact, we're only using one kilowatt at the moment. So these are topping up continuously. Uh, so how does it go from here? So that goes, these are DC. They're so AC then, coupled. AC coupled. Yep. So basically, because um, the inverter changes over from DC into AC, yep. these then store in DC power. Yep. So they come down in AC, they're stored in DC. There's a mini inverter within each battery. Yep. It's stored as DC, then comes back out as AC so that it can sustain things like in a backup situation. If you okay. have to go DC coupled batteries, you're 
limited because this inverter will, will kick out in, a, in an AC grid loss and you won't be able to push back any of the energy. Right, uh, okay. When do we need this? Uh, this is basically a DC isolator. Yep. So should you need maintenance or anything or uh, anyone comes in to want to work on part of the electric to the system, we advise yeah. that they come in and they turn basically all three systems off because you've kind of got three forms of generation now rather okay. than just the grid supply. Yep. You've got solar and you've got battery backup. So if yep. anyone wants to do any work or anything like that, they need to be coming and turning these switches off, AC isolators, DC isolators, and both AC isolators for each battery system. Okay. And these are actually liquid cooled, these batteries, aren't they? They are. And there's a little humming just going on in the background now, the so they'll sort themselves out. Yeah. And we've only just literally turned the system on. We've still got to do some labeling and stuff like that, haven't we? But yeah. I was just impatient and want to see what's happening here <laughs> and what's going on. Um, Okay, so we've got them, they're topping up nicely. What, yeah. is, what is this bit so here? So this is called a total generation meter. This yeah. basically clocks up the amount of units that the solar has produced from the moment it's switched on yeah. for the course of its life. Yep. Um, so it's a good point to kind of come in and see if you go down the line of getting... Um, uh, Three and a half kilowatt hours already. Yeah, exactly. Turn it on. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, so if you go down the line of like an export tariff or anything like that, yes, they will yeah. ask for these numbers and this will be part of the, the And system part of this is we had to also change the main meter here, which is now smart meters, and this also shows export yeah. uh, yeah. generation as well. Correct. Um, so we're of Octopus Business and we've got to get that tariff changed over, but I don't know how to respond on that at the moment. Uh, okay, so two Tesla Power 2s. This is a Tesla Gateway, Gateway 2. Four. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Um, so this basically is the brain for the Tesla systems. So, okay. Um, the main grid supplies feed this uh, this unit as the first port of call. Yep. And it then transpires off into the loads within the property so that it's And this is this what's communicating exactly, to the app and yep. everything like that? This is what gives you the monitoring and what reads exactly what's going on with the grid supply and what's happening and, and bounces off the information to your phone. Okay. And so that really is controlling the whole thing is this clever yep. little box here. Yeah. Yep. 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 Okay. Good stuff. You've done some extra things, so more isolators and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Yeah. Any of this kind of relevant? This is our old uh, consumer unit, mm -hmm. um, so that really is standard. So it's kind of all this stuff onwards. There's a whole ton of wiring in here, there is. and you've tucked it all up quite neatly yeah. into here. So I'm it looks pretty good. So. <laughs> it looks pretty good. So we've we've got 60 panels. Each one's 415 watts. Mm -hmm. uh, so if everything was super optimal, we'd be producing pretty much near 25 kilowatts. Yeah, Obviously, it's never out. probably going to be quite all optimal, yeah. but we've got east, south and west, so yeah. we should have a nice supply during the day. And if we are over generating over 20 kilowatts, mm -hmm. you've got to remember that's three seven kilowatt car chargers at once charging up. Um, so that's pretty good, isn't it? And plus offices and stuff like that. So this would be really interesting to see the difference it makes to our costs here, and especially sure. as our energy costs at the moment. Earlier this year it was 16 pence per kilowatt, now it's gone up to 90 pence per kilowatt hour. So yeah. this meter here, what we're importing from the grid, that's got to stay still. I want that to be as still yeah. as possible. We yeah. don't want this like a disco light anymore. Exactly. This was flashing flash red when we're charging yeah. cars and stuff like that. So hopefully now, even if we just trickle charging cars in a day, a couple at a time, that's fine on a cloudy, rainy day and mm -hmm. such like. Yeah. But even when it is cloudy, even when it is raining, mm -hmm. they're still, still going to be producing. You will obviously yep. see losses. It will not be as as much as it would be if the sun was cranking out. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely will see still see some production there. I'm looking forward to seeing this. So then we get. So two ways of viewing this, and I think we'll put like a screen up in the lounge, but I've got the Tesla app mm -hmm. on my existing Tesla account. So I just logged in, it's already on there, that's good. And I've got some settings I can play with on that, so that'll keep me busy. And then we've got the uh, control from the Solar Edge as well. So that will give us visibility as well as what's being yep. produced. You can kind of cross-reference uh, yep. data and things like that. Really. But actually the Tesla app is showing me the production and what we're charging the yeah, batteries and all kind of anyway. the whole system. It'd be more the Tesla app you use than the Solar Edge app. It's just good yeah. to kind of cross-reference data, really. There we go. So that's, that's all that. It looked really complicated. And that's all boxed up and looks really neat. Thank you very much for no all worries. your work. You've no, been working away here for three days and very clever it is as well. So thank you no very much, both. No uh, These guys have been really good at Naked Solar. I've been working with them for, like I say, nearly three years kind of talking about this, planning it. And then we scaled up what we were going to do here. I was going to do it in a couple of phases to spread the cost of it. But with the increasing rise of electricity prices, so just to get everything in we can. So we kind of maxed out what we could uh, with the solar panels and everything we can do here and now. It's cost a few quid, but I think it's going to be worth it. And uh, the original projection was to actually uh, fully repay it back from the energy savings in, I think, it's about six and a half years. With the current cost of commercial electricity, it's probably going to be much shorter than that, probably within two years, probably 18 months, actually. You know, so And then it's just great to know that these cars that we're driving around in, we're going around the country collecting and using our vehicles, is all being produced for free from the sun. And isn't that the goal? This is what we want everyone to try and have. So this stuff 
takes time to get it. These have got over a what, year's wait time for one of these power yeah, walls. At the, at the moment, as it currently stands. Yeah, yeah no one have got yeah, two security to systems here. Yeah. Yeah. You just can't get enough of this stuff. And same as Soda, I know you guys are flat out yeah. busy. Yeah. Just we don't want the thousands of people contacting Naked Soda saying, can you do my garage roof next week? Because I think you're busy for a while, aren't you? But yeah. uh, these guys have been really good. So a massive thanks to Naked Soda from this. I hope that's been an interesting video. Uh, there'll be more to follow as we get to grips with this system, how it works, what kind of production levels we get, and how we get on charging these cars. But if we can produce over 20 kilowatts at some point, that'd be amazing charging a car up fully and getting a couple hundred miles. You know, potentially, this can supply you know, hundreds of miles worth of driving mm -hmm. a day. You know, plug a car in, that's enough to drive from here to Manchester Absolutely. by the time we get to the mid afternoon. So, that's the kind of stuff we want to see. So more videos to follow on this. Thank you for watching. We'll see you soon. Hey everyone, thanks for watching our videos. If you like our content and want to see more, don't forget to not only subscribe, but also hit the bell icon for notifications so you don't miss any new videos as they're uploaded. Plus, we're also on Instagram. Just look up R Simons or RSEV. Us, we're on Facebook and Twitter. So lots of news, stories, and things as we go on each one of those channels.